Thanks for joining us at Ride On Replicas, where we're proud to bring you the best scale model kit reviews on the planet. This kit rescue and review covers the B-2 Advanced Technology Bomber, that's the ATB, by Revell. It was released only once in 1987, and it's a 70, 172 scale, number 4577 kit. The finished dimensions are a whopping 26 and a half inch wingspan, 15 inches in length, and 2 and a half inches high. Now the B-2 was developed from its ill-fated predecessor, the YB-49, which is a fascinating story in itself. Now this is a what-if kit that was rushed into production after credible reports of the existence of the top secret B-2 aircraft leaked out. The kits like these are getting harder to find, but they're on auction sites, etc. And if you see an interesting kit that looks like it could be rescued, take a chance. They probably won't be reissued, at least not with the price of new offerings skyrocketing faster than a B-2. They can be attractive modeling projects in their own right. Two things to keep in mind, though. Um, you're going to want to make sure it's something you really want to do because there's extra work involved. And uh, you have to take what it gives you. As an example, some parts are welded together so tightly uh, that disassembly can destroy the pieces. So simply work around them and detail it as best you can. This one caught my eye because it's a piece of modeling history. It's not an accurate facsimile of the B-2 Spirit as we discovered about a year after the kit was issued when the real plane was revealed. But back then the model makers were rabid to get the jump on the competition and push something out like this to market to the community of builders. Now they, they would take a chance hoping for a couple years of sales to recover the investment. Unfortunately that floundered as the real B-2 was shown about a year later. The kit didn't resemble the real real plane that looks uh, that's and, and it's more like a, a flounder look or a manta ray than a bat to me but this kit was partially and incorrectly started so I decided to see if I could rescue it from the dumpster and follow along and I'll show you how to rescue a bat here's what I got in the kit uh, and as you can see there's four wing halves and one large tree of uh, parts mostly landing gear and wheels and I think there may have been a separate tree for the uh, AGM missiles. But the um, fuselage halves and the flaps for some of the wells, along with the canopy and the uh, interior bucket, have all been uh, installed and were glued together. These are the decals that came with the kit. And they're basically your uh, secret um, airplane markings, along with the SAC banners. Um, but unfortunately, I wasn't able to use all the decals, and we'll get into that a little later. The first thing that I did was to disassemble the uh, two upper and lower halves of the fuselage. And I used my favorite knife. You can tell it's been pretty well used. Uh, it's a putty knife, just like the kind you use to uh, put putty on window glazing with. It's got a sharp edge, and it's fairly strong, but it's pretty thin. So it fits right in between any gap in the fuselage halves. And then I just ran it along there uh, gently and carefully until the parts uh, split. And then I could take the fuselage apart. Now, you may find if you have parts that are really welded tight, you may need to use a uh, what we call a razor saw uh, to actually cut the pieces apart at appropriate places. Disassembly revealed the uh, U Made in USA copyright from 1987 inside the uh, halves. I also found uh, the Revell copyright on the outside of one of the wings, which was a common practice back then, and that'll need to be removed and sanded off. After studying the instructions, I went ahead and used the uh, legend for the paint callouts to find where each color uh, of the items were on the instruction sheet and numbered those appropriately with the uh, color keyed markings. Opening the fuselage also showed that the uh, intakes were installed backwards. They should actually be pointed in the opposite direction. So anyway I removed the cockpit and then I uh, removed the uh, intakes. Uh, they weren't glued in too well because they actually didn't fit the contours. So those were taken apart. 
It also uh, revealed the fact that on the uh, inside of the intakes were some pretty heavy uh, ejector pin marks and there was a little bit of flash on the front end of that that needed to be sanded and cleaned up. The cockpit area uh, revealed three uh, seats and uh, I was able to remove the uh, canopy which uh, had not been uh, painted as far as the frame goes which was nice so then I could uh, reuse that. You can see here uh, in the red circles, there's uh, some pretty extensive sink marks uh, where some of the interior ribbing was uh, that needed to be filled. And the white arrow shows glue marks and fingerprints that I found on the uh, model. The white arrows here show that on the underside of the fuselage, the uh, landing gear flaps for the front and the uh, weapons bay flaps were installed. Uh, one of them incorrectly, it was a little crooked and we'll be taking that off later. But also um, the posts that are used to uh, put the guided missiles into their uh, weapons bay were uh, they had been broken off and they were filled in. So those will need to be corrected. The exhaust deflectors were binding and were at different angles so I removed those in order to uh, do a little work on them too. There was also a bulwark in the back uh, that is used to um, angle the deflectors and um, probably give a little stability to the fuselage, but I had to remove that entirely. As a testament to the mold makers, this was about the only flash I found on the kit, just a little bit on one of the wingtips. And quite frankly, I have to give the engineers and designers and tool makers kudos because the convoluted uh, forward leading edge of the wing where the two wings and the fuselage come together were absolutely remarkable in their fit. They were a perfect fit despite the, the complex contour of that uh, shape. Looking over the AGMs, I noticed that uh, there was quite a seam uh, that it really, they really weren't uh, glued together uh, properly. Uh, but rather than risk splitting them all apart, I simply filled the seams in. And then I added, uh, I drilled a couple holes in the top and added new posts for mounting them to the uh, weapons bay. So I began to fill in uh, the sink marks on the fuselage and cleaned up some of the thumb prints and discoloration. The uh, arrow here shows that the, uh, the uh, weapons bay door there had been removed uh, and will be reset uh, for the correct angle. There were two of the AGMs uh, that had contained uh, originally the um, posts that were used to uh, mount the um, mount them into the center uh, module there in the weapons bay, and I redrilled uh, the I redrilled the holes in the weapons bay in the center there. You can see uh, in the white circle, and then uh, you can also see the corresponding posts that were put into one of the AGMs there uh, in the red circle above that. I had um, finished uh, adding some of the putty uh, to the bottom of the seam there and kind of re uh, over going over the lines of the wings uh, to make sure that they don't disappear with paint. And I'd also uh, drilled a hole where the exhaust port is on the back of the AGM, put them on toothpicks ready for paint. And then I took the parts uh, all together that needed to be sprayed uh, a light gray paint uh, and that included the um, uh, cockpit area too. After the primer gray had dried, I um, painted the seats green uh, and highlighted the uh, seat belts with some satin black and then also the buckles. Uh, I used the Molotov chrome pen to highlight those. I blacked out the exhaust port and the intakes there on one of the center AGMs and added some decals that I'd printed out um, on some decal paper with my inkjet printer just to see what they would look like if they were standalones in the weapons bay. Next I got to work on the fuselage halves by using a 180 grit sand stick uh, to rough sand the edges all the way around and then I went back over it with a fine sand stick to uh, make sure that it was a good flat surface for gluing. I then took and uh, finished off the, uh, the upper hole itself with all of the uh, sanding and finishing that needed to be done on the sink marks. You can see them here at the back uh, where the uh, exhaust uh, stanchions were inside and uh, there was quite a bit of work to do there. The gluing surfaces on the intakes needed to be cleaned up as well as uh, those uh, ejector pin marks needed to be uh, sanded and filled in. 
see the uh, wing spot there on the uh, underside of one of the uh, uh, wing areas where uh, it needed to be filled in. It was there was quite a bit of uh, sink mark on that. The exhaust deflectors didn't really fit well uh, in between the slats on the upper wings and lower wings, so I went ahead and widened that out. You can see uh, in the red circle the item at the top has the wider uh, slot there to fit into those stanchions. Uh, this is the bulk head that's in the rear of the plane at the tail and the arrows there indicate where uh, you're supposed to lay the deflectors to get them at the proper angle. But I found that that was iffy uh, and so I just glued them to the uh, upper and lower hole. I covered the canopy with what's called bare metal foil. Um, I put that down so that I could use it as a mask. And then I went ahead and cut it uh, out so that the uh, framework was exposed and the foil continued to cover the glass. When it's done, you can pull the foil off and you have a nicely masked canopy with a frame. Now we have the upper and lower fuselage halves all cleaned up and we're ready to install the deflectors and I just glued those into place now that they fit around the uh, center stanchion there and up to the edge of the uh, fuselage halves. And you can see here um, they're all in place and ready to uh, be assembled. I got a piece of K&S aluminum stock from the hobby store uh, to use not only as a display stand stock but also to reinforce the wing uh, and we'll show you how to do that. I butted the uh, wing up to the lower fuselage and then I clamped it together and that showed me where to mark a place to lay the uh, aluminum tube in uh, in order to solidify the entire wing to the fuselage. So I used a razor saw to cut the um, fuselage edges out where the rod would lay in place. I did the same thing on the other side uh, for the other wing and fuselage halves and marked where it would go uh, as you can see with the white circle there. I also glued the intakes into position uh, in the right direction. Next I used the existing uh, locating tabs and I glued the wing to the uh, uh, fuselage on the lower half and then I clamped it up and let it dry. Then I added the port side wing and I fitted the aluminum tube which is about 13 inches long uh, so that it would fit into the airframe and still uh, not uh, in, in hinge on the uh, wings uh, at the edges. I put the upper wings into position so that I could mark where the uh, needed to be cut out for the aluminum tube that goes through the fuselage. You can also see that there are some stripes on uh, the outer section of the tube and uh, I put that there so that I could grind that piece of the tube off to uh, allow the edges to be glued very uh, properly and solidly to the wing. I had opened the two ends of the tube up a little bit to allow some glue to go on there and, and make a good bond, but you could also probably just flatten it with a hammer um, if it's a malleable metal. And then I used a little liquid uh, CA glue to uh, glue it into position so that uh, it would stay put. Next I used a large amount of epoxy glue uh, to glue this rod into position and stabilize it into both the wing and the, uh, the center section of the hull. I glued the windows into the airframe with uh, some clear glue and then I uh, did the same thing and glued the uh, cockpit into position over that on the upper fuselage. Those components glued together into the lower fuselage, uh, I was ready to start assembling the pieces. But before I was uh, onto that, I did one more thing. I drilled a um, quarter inch hole just aft of the weapons bay, as you can see here in the red circle. I took a section of a Bic pen casing, and then I angled it and put it into position over the hole on the inside of the lower fuselage, up against the rod for reinforcement and then I glued it heavily with epoxy and put it into shape there. Finally I put a little cap on top of it so that the rod that came through for the display wouldn't run into the top of the fuselage half. Now I glued the upper fuselage into position and it fit perfectly onto the cleaned up lower half. I then used some liquid cement to glue the 
uh, port side upper wing into position uh, against the lower wing. Glue the other upper wing half into position and when that's done you can begin filling the seams. Also note that I filled the seam uh, what little there was around the entire wing area of the airplane. Now you may have noticed that the uh, front gear here had the wheels already installed on it and um, one of the wheels had been broken off so we'll have to fix that later but here is the rest of the main landing gear struts they go together pretty well um, and uh, I've sh there's going to be a lot of uh, close-ups so that you can see how it's assembled uh, but here also are the uh, other wheels they're all on one tree and then um, what you do is um, you, I took and painted those white uh, because it's easier to paint the outside for me and so I went ahead and sprayed those to let them dry. Now there's a, there's two smaller wheels for the front uh, forks but uh, uh, struts but there's also the rest of the uh, units that have a uh, inside and outside to them. Uh, the one with the large three lugs that's the inside wheel. So go ahead and assemble those and clean up the uh, ridge where they uh, come together after cleaning up all the seams, uh, I placed some uh, painter's tape as a mask over the installed canopy. And uh, there's a couple pieces there at the top uh, that will be painted for the underside color. Uh, some flaps that uh, need to be painted that color. And as you can see um, on the underside, uh, I put some masking tape in some of the nacelles there in order to keep paint out uh, so that the landing gear could be glued in more properly. Now here's the colors that I use. I found this Krylon chalky finish. Uh, it's anvil gray. It was perfect dark gray for the upper surface. And then there's just uh, some Model Masters uh, light gray there for the for the underside. So here's what the uh, upper side looks like uh, after the uh, anvil gray is applied. And I used a, um, a soft edge technique around the edges of the outside of the wings. Uh, from both directions in order to keep a, a soft mix uh, right around the seam in the middle uh, for both those different colors and it came out very nicely. After the paint had dried I uh, gave the overall a coating of uh, floor polish the future style or pledge style floor polish and then I began uh, to put some of the decals into position. Unfortunately, I found that uh, the decals weren't in too good a shape. The adhesive uh, had, had turns kind of gluey and the gray uh, all but disappeared against the color once the decals dried. So I wasn't able to use those. I added, uh, I had masked the uh, wells off there and so I pulled that the wells out um, and that's an unpainted finish down there. Uh, you can see the tape there on the right. I had also discovered that um, as a consequence of the extra weight in the back, um, I had what's called a tail dragger. Uh, and if you were to try and uh, display this vehicle on its wheels, uh, the back end would sag down and pull the front wheel off. So I put some holes in the forward end of the weapons bay and I put some, I squirted some putty in there, uh, just some regular uh, sticky putty uh, and uh, gave it enough weight so that if I ever did want to display it uh, with the wheels down on the ground then I could do that. So now with um, a pledge coating over the entire surface I was able to go ahead and, and continue with the decal applications and I used the large blue field decals um, but I found the rest of them were difficult uh, to get to apply. They curled and so what I did was I had made a, a photograph of the decals and then I reproduced them on some decal paper using an inkjet printer. And most of the decals that I used then were reproductions of the original. Once the decals were in place and dried, I gave the overall finish a, uh, a coating, a couple of coats of uh, Krylon crystal clear paint uh, and it is a, uh, a shiny paint and I used a technique that's called a dry spray where I backed the spray can off about 18 inches and kind of let it float and hit the surface to emulate a coating uh, such as would be the case on a super secret stealth plane that has the uh, coating that's made to deflect any kind of radar uh, and so that's the technique I used and it, it came out pretty well. 
So I gathered up the um, AGM weapons and uh, the one uh, weapon bay door that needed to be glued into place and I, I started to work on that. As I mentioned earlier, you could uh, dress these up quite a bit uh, if they were standalone. Uh, and in that case, uh, you could then, uh, after you paint the uh, rest of the weapons bay white, you could uh, paint the um, the relief uh, missiles that are engraved in there, uh, same color gray, and dress them up with decals. Uh, and then just use the center one here uh, as your main display. So I may have mentioned before the... Uh, the weapons bay doors here were all pretty well heavily glued into place and removing them generally would have uh, just broken off all of the details used there. So I decided to leave them in place except for the one that was crooked and then uh, that necessitated having to paint them all by hand. So I painted all the weapons bays and window wells. Uh, flat white um, as the uh, as is suggested. After the weapons base had dried um, I went ahead and installed all six of the AGMs uh, in the triple clusters on each side into the weapons base. I'm just using some tube glue to make sure they stayed in place. Next uh, gather up the uh, parts for the landing gear uh, including the uh, flaps that have been painted for the exterior on the bottom. Now the front landing gear is pretty straightforward. Um, you can see that it uh, it goes into two holes in the rear and then it slides uh, the front strut up to uh, some angled sections at the bottom of the front well. And then um, the rears, um, of course, they um, they go into place and they fit uh, where they should go pr pretty properly. Um, you shouldn't have too much trouble with it. I'll show you plenty of angles here so that you can see how they are uh, built and displayed. And then um, the small flap and the large flap are placed in front uh, of the uh, landing gear uh, in the rear. And uh, of course there's already uh, been the uh, extra door that was uh, repositioned put into place as you see. And uh, those are, um, they're pretty sturdy structures, but the plastic in mine was very brittle. And one of these struts actually cracked as the glue was drying uh, that apparently it had a little torque on it. So I decided uh, even way before this not to display this uh, kit with the wheels down. Any sideways movement would break them. Um, next we can add the wheels. As you can see they're here on some uh, tape. Uh, they were painted uh, a, a rubber gray, uh, dark gray color uh, to emulate uh, you know those big tires on the big bombers and um, they're just simply snapped into place there. Um, they all fit pretty well but uh, you may want to use your hobby knife to clean out the hole where they're applied and then go ahead and make sure that they're lined up and, and they're all um, in line. Next I began work on my display stand and um, I roughed up the uh, a little bit of the uh, end of the tube there so it would take glue and I cut a triangle out of some evergreen stock to act as a stabilizer. I then fit it up there and then uh, put a little drop of super glue in place to keep it into position. And then uh, once that had dried I pulled it out and added a considerable amount of epoxy glue to make sure that it stays uh, into place and provides a good support for uh, lateral um, integrity on the uh, display stand. I bought a couple of wooden plaques from Hobby Lobby and painted them uh, to make a display stand. Uh, they're about uh, 8 by 10 and uh, they, this will give it a nice sturdy uh, solid base with enough uh, weight to keep it from tipping. And then I drilled a hole at an angle to accept the uh, display stand. And of course um, I had uh, also painted the entire um, uh, stalk and the uh, triangle that I cut uh, flat white uh, to match the rest of the uh, motif here. And as you can see it's all done and there you have it. And we've saved our bat. It's looking pretty healthy. And uh, these things uh, will probably never be reissued. And if you find a nice model uh, that you take to a liking to and you think that it's worth preserving, try and save it. Uh, they'll probably never be made again. And if they are, even so, um, prices are going up quickly, even for new kits. So um, sometimes it's worth the effort to, to put a little elbow grease into something. That, and in my opinion, this is a piece of modeling history. Um, and it's 
harkens back to the day when uh, model makers uh, were all in competition with each other and they were just putting out some massive amounts of stuff. But here's my bat. Uh, I'm proud of her and she's going to sit on my shelf uh, uh, for quite a while now uh, and look real proud. Um, so I'm happy to say that uh, if I were you, I'd find one and put it on your shelf. Just to show you, uh, as a matter of scale, here is uh, the uh, B2 compared to the, uh, the F117 stealth fighter. Uh, itself a pretty good sized craft. Uh, as you can see, no comparison. Uh, and so I'm, I'm happy with the way she turned out. I hope you'll give one of your favorites a try too. Well, there you have it. We hope you liked this premium model kit rescue and review. And so that you don't miss any more, please subscribe to our YouTube channel. But you can find us on Facebook and at our website, rightonreplicas.com. Thanks.